On September 9, 2020, residents of the San Francisco Bay Area woke up to haunting orange skies blanketed with smoke and ash. The apocalyptic skies were due to light being filtered through extremely dense smoke plumes from wildfires in Northern California in the state's worst fire season on record. As of mid-October, wildfires had ravaged well over 4% of the state's land, burned down thousands of buildings, and killed 31 people. More than 96,000 residents have been forced to evacuate. Wildfire suppression employs a range of firefighting tactics. Primarily, firefighters create fire breaks or lines by cutting trees or burning fuels in a controlled manner to create a perimeter around the fire. Aircrafts drop water or chemical retardant to actively douse the fire. It's no surprise that wildfire suppression costs have escalated with the arrival of longer and more severe fire seasons. Over the last decade, fire suppression costs six times as much as it did during the 80s. In 2019, the combined federal spending on fire suppression exceeded $1.5 billion. Further, firefighters who take significant risks to protect communities from the wildfires often earn only $14 an hour. If we paid them a more suitable wage, as we should, our costs would further increase. The smoke released from burned houses, power lines, and other infrastructure is a complex mixture of many chemicals. The particles from wildfire are less than a micron wide, allowing them to slip past the body's defenses into the bloodstream and going as far as the heart and the brain. Exposure can lead to immediate problems such as headaches, coughing, and wheezing. The dense smoke is a bigger danger for anyone with respiratory ailments such as COPD or asthma, and long-term exposure can contribute to heart attacks, strokes, and possibly depression and anxiety. This year, Portland saw an air quality index of 314, among the world's worst, as the Riverside Fire burned roughly 50 miles away. To put things into context, breathing this air is the equivalent of smoking 12 cigarettes a day. According to one estimate, up to 30,000 people per year could die prematurely due to particulate matter from the wildfires in the U.S. In November of 2018, a faulty power line in Northern California triggered a wildfire on Camp Creek Road. This fire killed 85 people, making it the deadliest fire in the state's history. During the blaze, tens of thousands of people were forced to evacuate. For many residents, the evacuation meant months of living in motels without knowing when they could start rebuilding, and at least half never returned. In total, the Camp Creek fire caused $16 billion in damages, but for the ones affected, the costs were not strictly financial. Most of them lost loved ones, their home, and their community. Forest fires can release an enormous amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This year in California, wildfires released over 100 million tons of carbon dioxide. This is almost twice the yearly emissions from the state's power sector. In Oregon, the fires released more carbon dioxide than both the power and transportation sectors. Forest fires release stored carbon into the atmosphere, but they can also reduce the forest's capacity to sequester carbon in the future. New trees and shrubs absorb less carbon due to their small size, but more importantly, Many forests in the United States are not fully recovering after fires. The hotter climate pulls too much moisture out of the exposed soil, preventing it from supporting the same number of trees. Not only are wildfires a grave indicator of the rapidly changing climate, but the associated emissions and loss of habitat also contribute to the exacerbation of global warming. Worldwide, the past five years have contained some of the worst wildfire seasons on record, which means governments around the world will face increasingly steep bills to manage them. The measured cost of wildfires in California are at least $20 billion annually, which is around 10% of the state's budget. In addition, there are numerous other costs that are very hard to measure, such as the lost income to local economies and the damage from post-fire flooding. The devastating loss of human, animal, and plant life cannot be quantified. 
Fire is a natural phenomenon predating humans, and nature has evolved with its presence. However, with the warming planet, we are enduring longer and more catastrophic fire seasons. To prevent wildfires in the short term, we can adopt forest management practices inspired by those historically used by indigenous peoples, such as periodic controlled burns. These reduce fuels and prevent larger uncontrollable fires. In the long term, we must reverse climate change to prevent unfathomable damage to our forests, air, wildlife, and the millions who stand to face the consequences.